Hey folks, I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we're going to take a look at something called sneaky throws. Now, sneaky throws exist to help us deal with checked exceptions in Java. So let's just take a look at the issue with checked exceptions in Java before we go into what sneaky throws might do about it. All right, so here we are in the code and we have a very simple class with a main method and some kind of really basic test type stuff. So we create a new instance of the class. We call the do it method. The do it method calls the get it method and the get it method returns the number one. However, for no apparent reason, the get it method <laughs> throws a file not found exception if it's true, if true is true. And obviously true is always true. So it always throws a file not found exception. Now this is just test code. Obviously in reality, you'd actually be looking for a file. And if the file wasn't there, you'd throw a file not found exception. But for testing purposes and for demonstrating this issue, we've got this very simple code. All right, so let's just have a look at what's going on here. So we've got this code here, which declares a file not found exception because file not found exception is a checked exception. And we know it's a checked exception because file not found exception extends IO exception, which extends exception. So if an exception extends exception, it is a checked exception unless it extends a runtime exception. So that's the specific case, even though runtime exception extends exception. OK, so just to say that again, if an exception extends exception somewhere in its hierarchy, but not runtime exception, then it's a checked exception. OK, so because file not found is a checked exception, we either have to handle it here with a try catch block or we have to declare it in the throws clause of the method. OK, now if we do that, then the methods that call this method, like this one here, do it, also has to either handle it or declare it in the throws clause of the method signature. And because of that, any methods that call do it also have to either handle the exception by declaring it in their throws clause or have to handle it with a try catch block. Now, that's quite a lot of ceremony for just one exception. And in a lot of applications, large applications, you'd have a lot of exceptions. So you can imagine the amount of or the sheer volume of ceremony that can occur as a result of checked exceptions. All right. So let's just look at some other issues. This is what I call the throw site. This is where the actual exception is being thrown. Now, checked exceptions are often difficult to handle at the throw site. Can you imagine if this was a method called get file? Now, a method called get file in an application that's just a utility method that goes and looks for a file could be called by any number of callers in a large application, maybe hundreds of times. This method here wouldn't know necessarily what to do if the file isn't found. Is it a critically important file? Is it a not very important file, which, you know, it doesn't need to necessarily end the application or error out? Or is it some absolutely critical config file without which the application can't continue? So it's often very difficult to handle an exception at the site at which it occurs. That's the first problem. Well, what to do if the file is missing? We could log it, we could ignore it, we could fail the application. OK, now in this scenario, we don't happen to handle it at the throw site, we just pass it up the chain, which obviously results in quite a lot of ceremony. Now, again, somewhere at some point you have to handle it or unless you throw it all the way out of the application. Now that, as you can see, results in quite a lot of boilerplate. Now, checked exceptions also kind of break the flow of the application as opposed to a type that could return a found or not found status in our imaginary get file method. OK, so something like optional. Optional can represent the situation where a value is present or isn't present and the caller has to handle it. In this case, we're just throwing an exception and everything winds all the way back up. It's very different to the general flow of the application. Now, these problems get even worse in Java 8, the streams API, which doesn't really play nicely with checked exceptions. So you can see that there are a few issues with checked exception, so much so that very, very few languages actually have checked exceptions. Now, having said all of that, there are some reasons to use checked exceptions, which is probably outside the scope of this video, and they're not always bad. There can be good reason to use checked exceptions, and it really depends on the project and the kind of standards and guidelines that that project has agreed. But regardless of the issues and regardless of the fact that there may be cases where checked exceptions actually work, we know for a fact that checked exceptions are here and they're here to stay, OK, at least for the foreseeable future. So what can we do about it to resolve some of the issues that we've looked at? Well, before we can go into that, I need to introduce you to a library called Lombok. So what is Lombok? Well, according to their website, Project Lombok is a Java library that automatically plugs into your editor and build tools spicing up your Java. But in simple terms, you could explain it as something that allows you to add a few annotations to your code and avoid a whole bunch of boilerplate that's often associated with Java, basically handle some of the annoying parts of Java. It's injected in in the background during the compile phase as if you had added the code. It kind of adds almost like adding that code in the background, OK, but you don't see it. This is not a Lombok course. We're just talking about Lombok's sneaky throws. So what is sneaky throws? 
Well, let's just jump straight into an example and see how we can simplify this code. So first things first, if I just remove that, and that's what we want, okay, you can see that we get an error. Okay, now to mitigate that error, we can add sneaky throws to the signature and that error goes away. Now, because that's gone away, we no longer need to declare this. And because it's been removed from there, we no longer need to have this try catch block. Okay, so we can get rid of that too. And all of that in fact. Okay, so you can see that's immediately simplified our code and we can get rid of some of these comments because we're not really doing anything to do with the exceptions now. We've thrown them sneakily. Okay, so we get rid of that and we can leave this here. All right, so hopefully you can see that that's drastically simplified the code that we had, even though it's only dummy code. It's immediately a lot cleaner and immediately a lot simpler. A lot of that code junk has just gone away. Now, sneaky throws is not something specific to Lombok. It's a technique you can do outside of Lombok, but Lombok just makes it very, very easy. As you can see, it was just a matter of adding this annotation. Now let's just try to understand a little bit about what's happened here. I've seen even articles online talking about Lombok swallowing exceptions and turning them into runtime exceptions. It doesn't really do anything of the sort. It doesn't swallow the exception. That would be terrible uh, and quite dangerous for your application. It doesn't wrap the exception in a different exception, okay, because that could produce you know, unexpected behavior. It doesn't even turn your checked exception into a runtime exception, which a lot of people seem to think that it does. In fact, what it does is it tricks the compiler such that you don't need to declare the throws clause, but that checked exception will still be thrown. It's just that you haven't had to add the code, the throws declarations or the try catch to actually handle it. You're kind of treating it as if it was a runtime exception. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that can make your coding life easier and give you another tool to use when you're programming. I tend to use sneaky throws quite a lot, but do check with your project and the kind of standards they follow. Sometimes they might not be as keen, but personally I use it a lot and it makes my life a lot easier. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you think you're likely to use or whether you've had any pushback on the projects you're working on. And if you want to stay up to date with developer news and more useful tech content, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.